Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bevy Basics. In this episode, I'll be continuing on last episode's topic of scenes. Whereas the last video focused on the data structures of scenes, this one will focus more on how to save a scene to a file. This will then be followed on by other videos of different ways to create scenes, such as editing the file that we are going to create in this scene, or by using something such as Blender to make a GLTF file and importing that. In this video, we'll start with how to make a struct able to be put into a dynamic scene, how to co simply convert a world to a scene, and a more advanced way of converting your world into a scene, how Bevy Editor Please can be used to create and save scenes, and some pitfalls and restrictions of the way that Bevy implements its scene serialization. As of 0.8, the only way that Bevy provides for scenes to be serialized that is not brought in by a third party plugin is a dynamic scene. A world can be converted into a dynamic scene, saved into a file with the extension .scene.ron and then reloaded by the asset server as a dynamic scene. For a component to be added to a dynamic scene, it needs to reflect component. Doing so allows Bevy to dynamically insert this component onto an entity in the world. This is required because Rust type system is not directly serializable, so a dynamic reflection is a way of untyped insertion and removal of these components. When you create a dynamic scene from a world directly or from a normal scene, Bevy will go through every entity in the world and convert its component into a dynamic form, automatically skipping any component that does not reflect component or is not registered in the type registry provided. More detail is provided on Bevy Reflect in my previous video covering the topic. This in theory allows for automatic metadata type structs such as global transform to be skipped during serialization and then recreated when the component is inserted. As of making this video, Bevy does not utilize this functionality. I have an issue posted on the Bevy GitHub about this if you want some further reading. While converting a world to a dynamic scene, Bevy gives no guarantees that the conversion can be serialized. Instead, this will be reported as an error when using the serialize ron method. This is simply because dynamic scenes are not only used to serialize and deserialize scenes. In order to successfully convert to a ron and back, each struct that reflects component should also reflect serialize and deserialize traits. Setting up a struct so that it can be used as a component in the dynamic scene is more complicated than a component in a normal scene but can be done with just five derives and three reflected traits. You need to first derive components so that the struct can be inserted into the world. This is the same that you would do for any struct that you wanted to use as a component. You then need to derive reflect so that this struct can reflect traits and be added to the type registry. Serialize and deserialization need to be also derived so that the struct can then reflect these traits. And finally, default is required to automatically implement from world. You could also implement from world yourself, but in most cases, this is not necessary. From world is required for Bevy to auto implement the reflect component trait. Then you simply have to add the metadata tag reflect of component, serialize and deserialize so that the Bevy's reflect will pick up and reflect these traits. With your struct all set up to be inserted into a dynamic scene and saved, we will move on to creating the dynamic scene. In order to save a world as a dynamic scene, you will need to create a world saving system. The simplest way to save the world is to take a reference to the world as a system parameter using the from world constructor for a dynamic scene. The biggest drawback of this is that the helper entities that you have in your scene will also be serialized. This can cause some problems when the types are not intended to be serialized, such as in this example that you can find in the GitHub repository. It would not work because it tries to serialize the camera that I am using when setting the scene's position and that, that does not have all its types registered in the registry for there are some optional types that are not registered. My suggestion to fix this is to use the from world method found in the same example. This does exactly the same thing as what the dynamic scenes constructor from world does but allows you to provide a set of entities to serialize. For the sake of simplicity, and so that I can fit all of it into one slide, I've removed the actual working code and simply refined it down to the loops and then what each loop does. We loop through each archetype in the scene, which is basically the shapes that entities can take. Then through each entity in the archetype, we will skip any entities that do not appear in our hash set. 
otherwise adding the entity to the scene. We then loop through each component in each archetype and insert that to its corresponding entity. This could take a different approach, say passing in a component ID to skip and skipping any archetype that contained that component ID. This will construct a dynamic scene that only contains entities that we want. With that function constructed, we can now insert a component that tells the world that this object is part of our scene. We can then use a query for all entities with that component in our save world system, collecting them into a map and then using them in our new world function. This will construct a dynamic scene that only has the entities that we specify in it. This system can easily be modified to exclude entities that have a component instead, whether you do this at the collection point or at system previously shown, it depends on whether you are including most entities or excluding most entities. For optimization reasons, you'd probably only want to pass around the smaller of those two sets. Another option, rather than making your own world saving system, I would recommend is to use the Bevy Editor Please plugin. Once you've added this plugin to your application, you can press E to open the editor and change the scene to the scenes window. This will then allow you to give a scene a specific name and save them. This is done in the same way as the simple approach I showed earlier, simply serializing the entire world. But this has the same drawback, along with the additional drawbacks that the editor's camera will also be included in your scene. I have, however, made a fork of this editor, which you can find on my GitHub. In my fork, I have implemented the scene system so that it excludes any entity that has a specific component. By default, this component is added to the editor's cameras and any other dependency based entity that the editor adds. You can also add this component to your own entities in the scene, whether at compile time using the regular insert method or at run by right clicking, going to add and saying not in scene, not in scene. This will prevent that entity from being saved to the scene when you do so. Bevy Editor Please is amazing for developing your game, allowing to change and edit entity components at runtime while seeing how this impacts the game. I will cover this in more detail in the next video where we'll be focusing on creating and editing your scene using something like Bevy Editor Please as an intermediary step rather than directly modifying a scene's file. Although Bevy will allow you to serialize most of its components that it provides by default without complaining, this does not mean that they will work when unserialized. The key example for this is handles. You can serialize, then deserialize a handle easily, and it will work fine. But this does not mean that the handle will actually function as you expect. This is because Bevy's handles are just wrappers around U64s, possibly through multiple levels of indirection. This re represents a unique asset and a, in some cases a UUID representing the asset's type. For dynamically created assets, such as when you add an asset yourself at runtime or at startup, this is just a randomly generated number, presumed to be unique for your instance of the game, by the sheer odds that a random U64 number will collide with any other random U64 number, and is inconsequential even if they do, for only for that run of the game would to assets share the same handle and therefore cause bugs. This means that even though you may add an equivalent asset before loading your scene, it will not necessarily have the same handle as the one provided in your scene. If you are using handles in your scene, I highly recommend loading them from a file since Bevy will hash the file path and use that as the U64. This means that the handle will be the same for the same file every time, even after you restart. This also has the caveat of creating a weak handle and the asset does not store a path with the handle. This means you will have to preemptively load the file and keep a strong handle somewhere to prevent the assets from getting unloaded while the scene is still using them, since the scene cannot do this itself. There is also the more complicated option of using your own handle numbering system that is not random and using the asset set method rather than the add method to get your handle. As seen in this example here, I'm creating a handle ID and then using set with that handle ID, allowing me to specify the ID, which would allow for scene creation to have more fixed and rigid IDs. You could, for example, create this ID by hashing the name of whatever you entity you are trying to create the handle for so that the next time you do it, it'll be the same hash of the same handle, therefore creating the same ID. This would still require you to preemptively create all the assets and keep a strong reference to them somewhere, but would not have the issue of entities being random and would therefore not have to individually go and manipulate handles 
to set their IDs correctly. The same restrictions apply when serializing instance-specific but not globally unique data, such as entities. Bevy will take care of mapping entities within the dynamic scene to the correct entity in the world. So you can refer to entities like parents within the scene themselves. But you cannot refer to entities that are not in the scene, for there is no guarantee that they will exist or have the same entity when the scene is loaded next. Once you have saved your dynamic scene to a file, you can use the asset server to load it back into your game, whether that is later in that play session or as a level after the game has shipped. Beffy the asset server accepts the .scn.ron file extension as a dynamic scene file and will take care of loading it up, loading the file and deserializing it all into the correct components. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you subscribe to see the next video where I'll go into actually creating one, a system that allows you to spawn entities into your world to then manipulate with some kind of custom built code and how using the bevy editor please can be a great way to set up scenes and explore them to before saving them to disk to then be used in your actual game without the editor. I will also be covering how to load scenes in something like Blender to then be exported and loaded into bevy.